Hey everybody, so in this video, we're going to go over creating uh, new components in a Stencil.js application. Uh, so in the previous video, we covered how to uh, set up a basic Stencil.js application, and we have sort of three main options for using Stencil, and they were that we can either uh, just create a individual st uh, Stencil components. If we wanna just write some web components to use elsewhere, we can do that. Uh, we can create applications with Stencil. So we can put a bunch of web components together and create an entire application using Stencil as a sort of pseudo framework that ties everything together for us. And then we also have the option of uh, basically taking that same approach of building an application with Stencil, uh, but also including the Ionic PWA toolkit. Uh, so we can use uh, the various Ionic components and have some service workers uh, set up and things like that. So this application that we have here, the default uh, Ionic PWA toolkit application just has uh, a few components set up. We have our root component, a home page component, and a, a profile page component that we can go to. And as I mentioned in this video, we're going to cover creating uh, a new component. So if we just take a look at the uh, structure of the project here, we went through this a bit in the last lesson, uh, but you can see we have the app home, app profile, and app root uh, sitting in here. And so we could create another sort of page component if we wanted, where we're using uh, the Ionic stuff here with Ion header, Ion content and all that. Or we could also create uh, just our own individual small components that we want to embed into a page rather than creating a whole page itself. Uh, but whichever approach you're taking, it's the same thing either way. Uh, you'll just be doing a different thing with the component. So what we need to do to create a new component is uh, just come over to the components folder here and we'll just go new folder and we'll give the component a name. And so what I'm going to do is uh, just, I'm not gonna create an entire page with this one. We're just gonna create a simple uh, component that just displays a message or something like that. Something really simple. So I'm just gonna call this app. Uh, I'll just call it app test. Uh, Cause I'll probably just delete this afterwards anyway. Uh, and it is important to uh, give your components a name uh, that's prefixed with some kind of identifier. So uh, for example, Ionic uses Ion uh, for everything. Uh, so you might have your company name, you might prefix all your components with that. Uh, basically, you just don't wanna run into a situation where your components are conflicting with something else. So once we have a folder created there, we can just go and create a new file. And all we need to do is create a TSX file. So I could call this app test.tsx, and that basically uh, is a JSX uh, file, which we talked a little bit about in the previous lesson, except we're using TypeScript. So it's uh, T for TypeScript SX. And the basic idea with creating a component here is that we're just uh, exporting just a standard sort of ES6 or TypeScript uh, class. And that is going to provide whatever methods you need uh, to provide whatever logic your component needs that's going to be within that class and it's going to return a, a template to use. Uh, so what we'll need to do is say export class and we'll call this one app test. And when you are creating these components, you're probably not gonna write this out manually every time. It's probably just easier just to go in and uh, copy and paste all this, but uh, we will just do this manually for now just to talk through what's actually going on here. And now, so you could do uh, other stuff in here, maybe you want to declare some member variables, maybe you want to set up some uh, methods or other stencil things, which we'll get into later. Uh, but for now, in this video, we're just going to cover just doing the, getting a really basic component set up and we'll sort of build on that in the future. And so the key part of this component here is going to be having it return some template. And with JSX or TSX in this, uh, in this case, what we want to do is define a render function and that's what is going to be rendered out for this uh, component when it's used. And so this render function will return a single uh, node. So generally we might have something like this, for example, where we re return a div. It doesn't have to be a div, but you just have to return one single sort of root node. Uh, so we can put stuff inside of this, but we can't, for example, return two divs like this. And you see I stuck it in error there. Uh, and if you're not used to JSX, uh, this style might seem a little bit weird that we're just putting HTML directly in our JavaScript here. But uh, yeah, I guess you just need to get used to that a little bit. And again, if you're not familiar with JSX, you will come across some things that uh, might not make sense initially. For example, you can't 
you might just assume you're just writing normal HTML at this point, but if you wanted to add a class to something, you would say uh, class name equals uh, whatever. And there's no, there's no hyphens in here, for example, everything is gonna be this camel case. Um, uh, but I don't wanna to get too much into that right now. Maybe I'll do a lesson specifically on uh, JSX, uh, which uh, might be useful. So let's try to stick on topic for now. So we have our div that's going to be returned. And then, as I mentioned, I just wanna uh, return something simple. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's return another paragraph tag, which says test component works. And since I'm just returning a paragraph tag, I could even just um, return that directly and that have that as my root node. So what I want to do in this uh, function now is I have to return uh, whatever uh, template is there and that will return our single root node of div there. Uh, but we can also uh, supply multiple root nodes if we want. Uh, but if you want to do that, for example, as I mentioned, you can't d just do uh, this. As you can see, we're already getting uh, an error there with our editor. Uh, but what we can do if we want to return multiple root nodes here, we can just uh, return an array instead. So we're kind of returning an array of root nodes here. So that means I have to add a comma. Uh, so this is like the first element in the array there, and this is the second one, and this will work fine. And that's actually what's happening in this app home component. You can see we're returning ion header and ion content, and they're both root nodes in this case. They're separated by a comma and an array is being returned. So if you want to return multiple uh, root nodes, uh, you'll need to do that. Uh, but we'll just keep the one for now. So we'll get rid of that array. So that's most of what we need to do to create this component, but there is a little bit more as well. Uh, so we also need to use the component decorator that Stencil provides. And if you're coming from an Angular background, then this will probably feel very familiar. Uh, so basically we just import component Again, just as we would in an Angular application, except this time we import it from Stencil Core instead of Angular Core. And then we just decorate this class with an app component uh, decorator. And we'll also need to supply some uh, metadata to that as well. So we just need to define uh, the tag. Uh, so this will just be what our web component uh, is called or what we use to embed it into our uh, template somewhere else. So if we call this app test, that means that elsewhere in our application, we'll be able to embed that by using app test. And then we may also want to provide a style URL. So this would be just app test.css. Uh, this doesn't actually uh, exist yet, so you don't need to include this, but if you do want to, make sure to go ahead and create that in uh, your component folder there. So we'll create that app test.css file. And now we have our component uh, completed. So now that we have that, we might, for example, let's come into our home page here and we'll add that as a component, uh, perhaps just in our content area here. So I'll add app test. We'll save that and we'll see what's happening in the browser. Okay, so you can see down here now we have test component works, which means that our component is being uh, embedded into this home page here. So as I mentioned, there is a lot more to cover, of course, uh, Generally, we'll you know, want to do more than just render out some simple HTML content. We'll probably want to have some logic, some event listeners, uh, other things like that. Uh, but we'll cover that in uh, additional videos. I plan to do quite a few of these videos and we'll cover sort of a little concept each time. And the only other thing we haven't really covered specifically about creating components here uh, is that you can use them as an entire page. So. If we wanted to create another page here, uh, like app profile or app home, it's the exact same concept. You would just uh, create something that looks more like this. You have an entire sort of template instead of just a single, um, you know, just a little message like this. Uh, so you just design it the way you want your page to look, and then you'll just need to set it up in uh, the routing for the application. So if we take a look at the app root file, you can see we have the route set up here. You just add that to these paths here and you're about to navigate to it. Uh, I will cover this specifically in another video uh, as well. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, as always, please do feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.